welcome to anyone who's watching this or maybe no one i don't mind that would be nice if some people like would start watching this but if not it's all right to me so this is going to be a knitting podcast as many of them are out there but i thought like why not do another one <laughs> but basically yeah i just wanted to have an excuse to talk about knitting for an hour or so and I mean, I have some real life knitting friends. Um, I even had like a small knitting group. They, we just started recently me uh, meeting up, but they are back in Berlin and I just moved back to my dad's because I just finished my studies and have a lot of free time right now. So I thought like, why not do a knitting podcast? And yeah, the other friends I have who are knitting as well, they don't do it as intensely, so we will see, um, but I need some outlet for all the knitting I'm doing, it's crazy. So yeah, I don't have a job right now, I'm job seeking. Uh, there's another knitter on like on YouTube, uh, a Danish one, her name is Penila, and her YouTube channel or knitting podcast is I think called Simply Vanilla Stitching. And she's also just finished her uh, studies and is job seeking, so uh yeah I, when i saw that because i think she came out a few weeks ago or not even that but she's really relatable to me but yeah so i have a lot of free time i'm knitting a lot all day basically and uh which is like sounds like a dream for a lot of people and for me it's really nice as well but uh, yeah it's a i my wrists are hurting or not my wrist actually i didn't never get like wrist pain but my fingers and my backhand starts hurting. I don't know if it's, this is like a continental knitting thing, but yeah, this is what's happening. So I need to take some breaks, but except from that, I'm a lot of like knitting a lot of and watching YouTube podcasts about knitting. So yeah, I'm 29 years old. My name is Johanna and yeah, this YouTube channel is going to be called the same as my Instagram, so you can check that out if you're interested. Uh, I post there, um, I would see it, say regularly and quite in depth about the finished garments I do. And what else is there to say? Not much. Um, you probably will see this background changing, hopefully, because I hope to move out from my dad's place soon to find a job and to find a flat as well but who knows maybe i'm going to be stuck here for forever um so about the knitting um i'm going to do this in the like normal standard order like finished objects work in progress and also uh, acquisitions but i think i will change that a little bit even though i ordered a lot of yarn recently so um but i think i will do talk more about knitting plans also i'm expecting a parcel right now with yarn so there might be ringing a bell through this video and i might need to stop that and get the parcel or my dad will open the door we will see but yes um i think let's let's start with the knitting so my first finished object is the marseille sweater by petite knit it's looking like this yeah you can see it yeah i will insert a picture here i think um they are the same ones I posted, I think, on Instagram. So yeah, it's a dropped shoulder construction uh, with some stripe. I think the original one is like in a cream color and a dark blue or black. But I saw this one, like this color combination on Instagram and I was like, oh my God, I love it. And I really wanted to knit that. But I think the original pattern recommendation was for like I think one strand of merino or some kind of wool and one strand of mohair and I really wanted some summer sweater if there even is something like that I'm reconsidering this with climate change and like the heat wave we are in in Europe right now but yeah so I knitted this with cotton it's 
have my little yarn stash here. <laughs> Not stash, but like the, I prepped them because the corner looked weird in the video. So I used Rob's Loves You 9 in color boom, 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 103 and the off-white one is 101. And yeah, I think they look lovely together. And so it has like this like short row construction and you knit first i'm not even sure the back or the front and then you join around blah 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 so yeah really easy construction really enjoyed knitting this the only thing that is a little bit difficult is to join the or no to knit the stripes in the arms at the same height of the body so they align uh, because it doesn't give an any instruction how many stitches you should knit um, so but I think I did all right like it's not perfect but yeah I think oh actually it looks really good like this but yeah I did huge modifications on this so my other body is very short I'm generally a short person I'm like 1 meter 58 centimeters and but I have quite big boobs, I would say. So my breast measurement is 100 centimeters and I like to wear my things cropped. First of all, it saves a lot of money if you don't knit like a very long garment. And second of all, all my skirts and shorts and pants are high-waisted. So I don't need a jumper or anything to be very long. Um, but for... I wanted to have four stripes at least. I think you can do also five stripes, but I wanted at least four stripes because I looked onto the hashtag on Instagram and what I saw were at least four stripes. And But I knew if I knitted like the recommended row count for the gray stripes, this would be way too long. So what I did, I modified the row count. I did... Um, 14 rows instead of the recommended row count. I don't want to say it because it's part of the paid pattern and I did the but the but I did the normal white ones and So I ended up with a very cropped jumper. I have to say I also didn't knit like the recommended length of the ribbing because basically I was too lazy. <laughs> uh, like always when I come to the end of a garment or like of a part of a garment, I just, I just want to be finished. I just want to go to the next one and start a new project. And so yes, I think the body is all like all in all 50 centimeters long. So with a hundred centimeter bust, this is basically a square <laughs> and not a rectangle, a square. But um, yeah, actually it fits very well. I would say it could have been like two centimeters longer, I would say, but I don't mind it. It's all right. It's not like that anything is showing and it ends perfectly with all my uh, pants, etc. So yeah, I think we're all right. Um, so obviously I did the same with the arms and what I did in the inside, instead of um, cutting the yarn after one stripe, I, I'm not sure if this is called intagia, 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 I'm not sure how it's called, but I wrapped uh, the yarn from like the yarn that I'm not using I wrapped around the color I'm knitting so I don't have to cut it and I just followed it like so the yarn the white follows the gray stripe and then when I'm switching back I just can continue with the white and like the gray is going to be wide around the white I don't know if this makes any sense I think this is called intagia but I'm not 100% sure but this way I didn't have to weave in a lot of ends which is also something I don't I don't like <laughs> and yeah I'm really happy it's uh, I wouldn't say it's a soft cotton because I am knitting another garment in cotton and that's way softer but I would say it's like pleasant to wear also it has this dry feeling which some people don't like but with 30 degrees it's actually really nice not that I'm wearing this in 30 degrees but I think it's like the perfect sweater to just like put in your bag for like cooler summer evenings and just 
put it on when it gets cooler so yeah i think it's perfect for that and also i really like the color combination i think it's very useful like for daily use i think it fits to everything in my wardrobe i mean generally i have a very neutral wardrobe like with some earthy tones but i'm not very experimental when it when it comes to colors so i think everything fits anyways but yeah i think this is going to be perfect and yeah also i did change the size so uh i will like in most petite pet uh, petite knit patterns i am a size large but um since i knitted this uh, with a fingering yarn instead of a DK yarn I had to adjust to that and what I did I went down a needle size so instead the recommended four millimeter four millimeter needles I did uh, 3.5 millimeter needles and actually worked like the recommended needle size for the cotton was three no three millimeter and I did size up so I met like in the middle, you could say, and it worked. It wasn't too loose or something. It made like a nice fabric. And what I did, I sized up two sizes. So what I wanted to get was a 120 centimeter bust. So like the petite knit patterns are quite oversized, but I really like my garments to be cropped and oversized. <laughs> and um, in the end, uh the extra large which would have been i think did i put that down wait maybe i put that down in my notes so the extra large uh, extra large would have been 135 centimeters so i knit, knit the extra large but in the end I ended up with a large, I would say, it's 128 centimeters. So probably sizing up one size would have been enough, like doing the, uh, no. Ah, no, I did a mistake. I need to check this, wait. If you're curious, I'm wearing pants. They are just very cropped because they are from my like little sister and uh, I couldn't mind, like I didn't mind putting on real pants uh, for this video because I mean, doing home office or like just seeing the other bu upper body in videos, who puts on pants, to be honest. So yeah, what I did knit, so I made a mistake, I did knit the extra large but i wanted to get the size medium and what i ended up with was like kind of the large size so to get a smaller size or to get the recommended size i would uh, go up one size but not two sizes so if i'm definitely knitting this again maybe in a wool or in a dk or something but uh, that time i would do it like just one size like bigger even though I'm happy with the garment but like 30 centimeters positive uh, ease is quite a lot but it's all right but I think a lot of a lot of people would have been too much so oh my my hair looks wild my, my sister just cut it so it's I wouldn't say it's the most even even though she did a good job but uh, yeah I'm still getting used to it so my next finished garment i don't have with me anymore because it's a part it's a gift or it was a gift because um in may was it may april may i think i had the situation that i was kind of broke but what did to knit so i offered a lot of my friends to knit them something if they would pay for the yarn and what i ended up with that I mean that was my own mistake but uh, I showed them mainly camisole number no. five by my favorite things knitwear and they all loved it because I think it's a very modern looking and trendy and also classic tank top which is yeah 
really in trend right now so i think a lot of them liked it so there's going to be a series of camisole number fives in here but so yeah the first one first one i knit in sun is gone alpaca silk in like this really pretty mauve color i will insert a picture here and this is just the most sophisticated yarn i ever touched it's so so nice I like the yarn uh, the garment because of this silk part feels very cool but at the same time it's so soft because of the alpaca content and also because it has like some kind of halo um it just it looked beautiful i i i was really proud of it and also the color was beautiful and it fits her perfectly so i knit the size s and i think she has a, around a 95 centimeter bust so i think the has a lot of negative ease the um the pattern but I think the recommended size for her would have been a medium, but I ended up knitting the size small because I was afraid how much the alpaca content will grow because I think the recommended yarn is something else. I don't know what it is, but I think it was something that wouldn't grow that much. Um, yeah, and I needed, I bought three balls, so 150 gram, but I only needed 130. I did layer like the length of the body. Um, the length of the of the body was 40 centi 47 centimeters. Um, yeah, so and it fit her perfectly. I mean, what I could have done would be block out the upper, upper part even more because um, I think the rest didn't need blocking and she said i could have sized even more down i mean it fits her perfectly but it's loose it's not that tight i think on the picture of my favorite things knitwear it looks quite tight but on her it's more loose which looks fine as well but yeah so maybe size one or two sizes down depending on the yarn you use and i also did knit on three millimeter needles so did nothing special there and the only thing i noticed and you i will come back to that later but the um the fabric of the stitches where you knit and purl just knit flat and the stitches where you knit and round look very differently i will insert a video here because yeah i recognized it and when i sent it to her and I don't think a non-knitter would notice, but for me it's quite, it's quite noticeable. And I know that a lot of people adjust to their different gauges, like or that people purl tighter or looser than they knit. And you can adapt to that by using a different needle size. But since you knit the whole thing in two by two ribbing, you always knit and purl. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to adapt to that or change that because I've seen it in all of my camisole number fives and there are quite a few of them and there are a lot of different yarns. So it's not a yarn problem, I think. And also I don't think it's a needle problem. So maybe someone can help me or explain me why this is looking like it is. And so, yeah, ah, I forgot for the Marseille sweater, I used nine balls of the grey and one and a half balls or skeins for the white. So this was like only 10 euros, which is crazy to me, like a sweater for 10 euros. But what you will, because I will talk about the money I spent on the garments as well, because I think this is also really interesting. Also, I'm on a bu budget right now. You will think I'm crazy being on a budget and buying the yarn I bought. I will talk later on about that, but um, yeah. So the costs for the garments are very different <laughs> through, through this podcast episode. So yeah, this was like the Marseille sweater was 10 euros. The Sunless garn was quite expensive. I mean, it's, it's, more exp it's a more expensive brand. 
then drops and also alpaca silk is quite a fancy uh, yarn combination so i paid for that i think around 34 euros which is quite a lot uh, for a summer top i think but also i think i mean it was a gift and she paid she paid half of it and the rest is her christmas gift or her birthday gift i think and um so in the end i think it was worth the money i have to say with the yarn and yeah my third finished object i don't have with me as well because it was for a baby uh watching all these youtubers knitters podcasters whatever uh knit baby garments especially well loved knits i think she was the first youtube podcast um i watched so and she's pregnant right now and she's knitting all these cute baby garments so i was like okay i want to knit one as well and also i do have a lot of scraps uh especially from socks so i thought like okay these baby garments they use up so not a lot of yarn so they are perfect square projects and what i did was the ollie's bear head by hannah g knits she has a lovely uh, knitting podcast as well on youtube and it's very very cute uh, i used up lana grossa ecopuno i think uh, that was one of the <laughs> i mean yeah i bought this yarn to knit up socks which is just it doesn't work I don't know what the exact um, content uh, percentage is, but I think there's wool, cotton, and alpaca in that, or something like that. Or yeah, but there, I think there's no nylon or something. So it's a very, I'm, it might be the softest yarn I ever touched, uh, but it's just it's it doesn't work for like knitting socks i mean i knitted up the socks also it's the same colors like the orange and the brown but i don't think they will hold up very long but i because i didn't know at that time that like most sock yarns are sturdier with like a nylon base or some uh, synthetic fiber in them and i just thought oh beautiful color me might work for needle uh, for socks so just bought it and the socks are very soft and beautiful but i don't think uh, the owner of them because it was also gifted will have them very long and so but i think the yarn is perfect for baby knits because it's that soft i was worried about the alpaca content a little bit because um yeah it's not recommended for uh, children to have or babies especially newborns to have alpaca content in there uh, yarn uh, in their garments but i thought it's so it's not a lot it wasn't i mean it had a halo but it wasn't like huge strands of a halo so and it's also only for the head i thought it was alright, and but i did a huge mistake so the baby is being is being born right now i think or has been born already i mean it's it's the baby of a friend of a friend so uh, oh sorry and so i thought okay the sizing like one to six months would be perfect because then the baby could wear it through the whole colder season but um i did a mistake because this was the first american pattern i ever bought so there was obviously inch and centimeters and the inches were written first and then the centimeters and what i accidentally did i just i overread not a step but a line in the pattern and just read the recommended um, amounts or numbers for inches and i thought like oh yeah 10 centimeters perfect but in the end it was 10 inch and this is quite a huge difference i would say i mean it's i think it's more than double or something like that so what i ended up with was more of a preemie size than a, what like one to six months and yeah i think the baby won't have it for very long because i don't know how big the baby is going to be especially the head and yeah but it's also a cute head just for pictures 
even if it's not like um, very like useful for daily use but what I also did because I wanted to be to have the head all in like this dark brown because I thought it was like the perfect bare head color but I wanted to knit up some of that orange as well because I'm not a huge orange fan and I don't know many people in my life who like orange as well so I thought okay just use it up but do it in the inside because it's a double folded brim so it's not noticeable but if they actually like orange they can just like fold it down and just use it like that and then actually it would have you could use it for a longer period because it's like longer and wider and stuff like that so yeah but it's very cute and it only took me two days which is crazy uh, but yeah these baby knits are a lot of bringing me a lot of joy first of all they're so cute and second of all they are like um yeah you feel like very productive because you finish them very fast so yeah that's all of my um finished objects and what else yes work in progress um yeah, I will start with this one first. So, like I said, I'm on a marathon, 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 marathon of camisole number fives. Um, I mean, I do really like the pattern because I think it's a, uh, it's a, it's a pattern that's suitable to a lot of body types. So, like I said, I have quite big boobs, but I'm also not a huge bra fan, and so. I need patterns that work with that and I think a lot of like camisole or summer patterns are very cute and girly with lace or like what is it like uh, not waffles ruffles and stuff like that and I'm not really into it and or yeah there's a lot of out there that I don't really like. I think Crea Bea, Rebecca from Crea Bea has the same problem why she knitted herself uh, like uh, came up with a t-shirt design by her own which was really simple and also what I think a lot of these tops are not bra friendly which isn't such a problem if you don't wear a bra like me but I think they're also not very boob friendly <laughs> um, or for bigger boobs at least and so because they are like flowy and just hanging and yeah it's I don't think a lot of them work like I would like them to sit so yeah they, I think I think I would be, like it would be nice if there would be more patterns which would be also high coverage which I prefer and don't have like very deep uh, cuts under the arms and stuff like that but yeah camisole number five though works because it's quite tight fitting and it's like it goes up quite high and you can I mean you can lose knit it looser as well but I think with the negative ease in it it also uh, gives you some kind of hold I mean not the same as a bra but your boobs are not flying around i would say so i knit this in the most beautiful yarn i would say oh actually i think the color i mean it washes out a little bit but i think it's fine so yeah it has so this yarn i bought at the wool festival from this berlin-based wool shop wollen they are lovely and the shop is just beautiful and the wool festival was amazing and i bought this uh really really pretty green hand dyed speckled yarn i'm not sure if this color is called hasenheide because i think it was on sale and she said like she doesn't have any of them anymore uh, but online I could see a very similar yarn which is called Hasenheide so it might be that so the brand is called Kitzgarn which is a Berlin based brand I think and the woman who dyes the yarn is lovely as well and even on sale two skeins of this would have it was like 38 euros so comparison I knit this one for 10 euros and I'm knitting a camisole for nearly 40 euros 
on sale, I have to say. I mean, I think it would be, I, I mean, I saved just a few euros, not a lot, but still. So I don't actually know the meterage. I will put it in the video notes, YouTube notes, whatever. And, but it wouldn't have been enough from the recommended amount you needed from the pattern and my size. So I'm knitting this in size uh, large, also on three millimeter needles. And yeah, I would have needed more, but since I know that I'm always like, because of my short upper body, I need less yarn because I don't need that length. I thought, okay, I might be fine. And otherwise, what I thought about doing is knitting the edges. So this is not finished, even though I think it looks really finished. But um, so the double knitted edges around the arms and the neck band are still missing. And I thought, if I don't have enough yarn, I can knit that in another color, which would be actually really cool. But I think I have enough yarn. This is a lot, still a lot. I mean, double knitting takes a lot of yarn, but um, I think I'm going to be fine. Um, also, when I promised my friends to knit up camisole number five for them, I didn't know that camisole number five involves a lot of double knitting. Uh, since then, I didn't do any double knitting, so I actually didn't know what it meant to do double knitting. And I mean, I don't hate it, but it's tedious and takes forever. And so what I'm doing, because I'm knitting this another two times, um, which I come to next, but um, I will put this in hold and I think I might finish this in the winter or next year because I don't know if I can do like three times, three fucking times, the same top with like all the double knitting because with the other two garments, I'm on a, not on a tight time, what is it, time range, time frame? Yeah, but like both of the supposed to be owners do have their birthdays in September. So it would have been nice to, well, it would be nice to finish the garments until then. Uh, but we will see. So I think this is going to be finished for next year, but I'm really looking forward to it. I think like, especially like this, uh, I mean, it's not a like a bright color, but also there are like some speckles in it, which are really colorful. So I really think with like white pants, this looks good, like really nice in the summer. So what's next? Um, what I'm also knitting for myself is camisole number three, which is also, I think, a pattern which might work for boobs quite well. So I will try to show you this. So you have this like, so everything is knitted in brioche and you have like this quite nice looking shaping around your boobs like that it goes wider here and smaller here. I don't know, I think I will insert the picture of the garment uh, or on the Favorite Things Knitwear website because it looks really, really nice on her. So the yarn I'm using is from Sustaine Grainer. They're 100% organic cotton and Sustaine Grainer is like an interior, I think it's a Danish interior um, chain, uh, which also have, they also have a huge crafting department and you can buy actually kind of nice yarn there. I mean, probably it's not very, very, very sustainable because it's a huge, chain but i have some yarn i knitted like they have had some wool in december i knitted sweater number 18 from that i have to say it's not the best one it's very soft but i think it starts peeling very fast i also have some uh so this is their label uh some mohair and also some cotton and the cotton um color options are crazy i think not even drops has that many have met that many colors um so i think there were like eight different blue tones tones and it was very hard to decide but i really liked it this is very soft i have to say the garment is really really soft and 
I'm really looking forward to it. It's, I mean, with the brioche knitting, it's very airy. And I think because of the white shoulders, I can wear like a sports bra or something like that under that perfectly. And it has like, I think, eye cord edges, uh, which I still need to do. And yeah, I think it's very nice. Also, what I did, because I'm in my back in my child room and I found all these like um what is it? like chains not chains but like uh charms charms which I would wear on like uh, necklaces or arm braces is it no I don't know how it's called but for example I had a huge unicorn face so I found this and I thought like oh it's kind of sad to throw them all away even though I wouldn't wear them as uh yeah, as jewelry, jewelry, jewel. I I have problems with that word, as you noticed. And so I thought like, oh, I can just use them as uh, progress keepers, and they're quite cute. So this is why it's on there. But I really really like knitting this. It's very enjoyable. I love brioche knitting. I have to say, I'm never worried about losing stitches. I kind of think I found a way to fix that. Also, I knitted up the September cardigan by Petit Knit, Petit Knit, which is all in brioche knitting. And yeah, I just really, really like it with all the yarn overs. Also, it's very fast because you do a lot of yarn overs. And yeah, I think the finished garment will be very, very nice. And I'm really looking forward to this color or to wearing this color. And But I'm putting this on hold for right now because I need to finish up my other camisole number five. So I have to say I do enjoy much more knitting camisole number three than five because I'm not a huge fan of the two by two ribbing and also of the double knitting. So another camisole number five I have is, how do I show this? The beginning it looks kind of like sad is this oh my god this color looks amazing on the screen it's just crazy so the yarn is for my roommate she chose that one and she's a very colorful person and um so i said like please choose a color because i mainly knit in neutrals some green some blues but that's kind of it and I said like, oh, please choose like a very colorful color. So because I do enjoy knitting with colors, even though I'm not wearing them. And yeah, she chose this uh, sock yarn. I think you can see it best here. Yeah, yeah, it's, this is, this is great. So the yarn is called Sockenwolle Vitamin E Merino Sock Wool and 80% 80 superwash wool and 20% cellulose and it's made in Austria yeah this is the label and so this is proper sock wool I would say uh, for sock wool I think it's soft for a skin to skin camisole it's quite uh, scratchy Especially if you compare it to the single ply merino. Yeah, oh yeah, I forgot to say this. This is single ply merino and the alpaca silk. I did knit this before. So I hope she's going to be able to wear this because I told her like, oh, this could be really scratchy, but she said, oh no, it's all right. And yeah, we will see. Also, this is not enough. From the oh I'm knitting this in the size XS so I knitted a size S I'm knitting for myself a large and I'm knitting this in XS uh, which is also a size down from what would have been recommended for her bust size but since this, this is a super wash wool I think this will grow a lot so I thought like be more on the safe side and yes but I have to say I hope yeah, I hope this is going to be all right for her. I mean, it will soften up through washing. I know that. But like this colorway is crazy. I mean, this reminds me a lot of like 80s Californian surfer style vibes because I think they had like a lot, like in the 80s, they had like a lot of hot colors, like and a lot of color blocking as well. And I think pink was like, was a thing then. But also they had like this gradient thing going on a lot. 
so this reminds me a lot of this and also it reminds me of ice cream i don't know like i think we have like this as children we had like these color fading ice creams so yeah i'm really curious but i think in the front it's perfect like the color changes are just amazing but on the back because i was afraid if i because you knit first the front and then you knit the back and then you join it around so i was afraid if i continue with the same yarn from here on like if i continue with the end of the yarn which i like when i stopped here and ended up here that they wouldn't add up the stripes wouldn't or the fading wouldn't add up like that i would have like a really light tone here or something that it wouldn't be look like uh, fading but like a proper stripe i didn't want that so what i did instead i used the end from the middle of the skein i pulled it out and started knitting with it here and when i join in the round i can continue with the skein from the outer side so the front will be like all perfect grading but the back might have some stripes on it i mean this is already kind of a stripe but i think it looks really cool but also what i notice here that the back doesn't have that much fading in it in comparison to the front so it could be that the yarn is dyed very irregularly but i think it's going to be interesting so yeah i mean I have to say knitting with it is not that enjoyable because it's a wool and it's 30 degrees outside and also it's very scratchy but knitting up the fading is so much fun which makes me question if i should like knit fading socks as well at some point because i used to be like a huge sock knitter and just last winter i started knitting garments so yeah but i never knit like faded socks so this is like really really cool yeah, I really enjoy this and I hope she's going to join. I mean, I'm pretty sure she's going to enjoy it because uh, this is totally up her alley. And I mean, she shows the yarn. And what I thought, if the yarn is not enough, um, I might use a different color for the edging, which was the idea I had for the green one as well. But I think especially for this one could be like really cool. Like with this color, for example, this would look great or even... A white edge would be really cool as well i think there are a lot of really interesting color combination you can do i think that is my yarn i think i just heard the bell but i think my dad is opening the door for me so yeah that's another camisole number five and of course i'm doing another one <laughs> so another one i'm doing is there's not much to see <laughs> basically oh this is the wrong side but i mean so yeah, that's basically another camisole number five and in the making, but um, I'm going to finish the body first from the pink one before I'm going to continue with this one because between the birthdays, there's, I think, a three week gap. So I think we would be all right. So first I thought about knitting. Yeah. Yeah, ich weiß. Because I so first of I thought about knitting this in Filcolana Aveta Classic in the color Marzipan and it's 977. I think you see it a lot online. This is like a really nice I mean they have a color that is called oatmeal, but I think this is an actual oatmeal. It's like this heathered melange grayish no not grayish but cream and beige colored and it's really pretty but it's like uh 80 percent superwash merino wool and 20 percent nylon and what she wanted was like a gray grayish beige sand color for summer so you can't wear this in summer so i think this was a poor choice but i repurposed this yarn already for another project so what I did instead is buy a blend bamboo from uh, Kjertegarn and I think this color is just perfect. First of all, it has this beautiful sheen to it, which is just amazing. And because it has a 70% bamboo and 30% cotton um, 
content and it runs on 150 meters for 50 gram it's recommended for three to three and a half millimeter needles and i saw this because i think this is the recommended yarn for the camisole number three but i saw this already in copenhagen because i was there for a week uh two weeks ago and i thought about buying it there but then i thought like okay this is actually more expensive in copenhagen in a yarn store as if it I would order it online from a German yarn store and so it didn't make any sense. So what I did instead, um, I went to my local yarn store like in my small hometown and actually they stored it so I thought like oh perfect um, and yeah it's knitting up really nice it's very soft really nice to knit with and the finishing garment looks really nice as well. I mean, in comparison to knitting this with like wool, it doesn't have any halo, but I think it will be really nice from, for summer. And I'm knitting this also in a small, like, yeah, um, because she has like the same bust me measurements as my first friend with the mauve colored one. But in the end, uh, to because this is not as, but with blocking it won't grow that much so actually this is going to fit her perfectly i'm looking very shiny because i mean it's hot but i'm not sweating but i think the window is in front of me because i thought it's perfect lighting but um yeah it makes me look really shiny so yeah actually i think this is going to be really really nice but yeah i'm finishing the pink one first or at least like get uh, some progress on it before I'm going to continue with this one. Also, I'm really really want to wear the blue one this summer. I mean, I think we're going to be ha going to have like summer temperatures until the end of September this year. So yeah, these are all my works in progress, and I did order some yarn as you just saw as my dad came in and. So what I'm doing, I'm also planning to use the Fecolana Arbeta to knit up the Nord pullover. I don't know, by Hannah something. I already bought the pattern yesterday, but uh, the Nord pullover... Where's her not? Norwegian design. Hanne by Hanne. Hanne Rimmen. Ah, yeah. Women is her last name. I don't know if she's German, could be, or some Scandinavian country. But yeah, so that is also, I think, kind of for a sport DK. So yarn, or the recommended yarn is a sport DK kind of uh, yarn. Um, so you hold some other Fecolana yarn together with another mohair. But I'm on a anti-mohair phase, at least for myself right now. So I thought about just adapting the needle size and knitting this with this on my on its own but i think it won't work i started swatching i'm waiting for the second color because it's a striped uh pullover and but it's it's just too drapey it just it feels like a summer top from the thickness and what i might do because i ordered from this lovely lovely german online shop they you can buy it through etsy but you can buy it through their website as well and they are like family owned yarn store and they have like these lovely not cones but uh, winded up yarns and they are actually really really affordable i have to say and i think yep not mehr pakete not mehr Danke. And uh, that was another yarn order. <laughs> uh, and actually, I, I wanted to use this um, with the mohair to knit up the Cassia crossover, which is like kind of a wrapped cardigan, but without wrapping it, but it has buttons here. So it's very lovely and I would love to have that, but actually it's a lot of purling and I hate purling, I realized. <laughs> 
<laughs> I really don't want to purl that much so I'm putting that on hold right now and I thought like okay I can just use that because I can reorder that and actually I think this is quite the perfect color combination and I think to make this um less drapey and more sturdier i think i will combine these yarns and for the second color i ordered let me what is this oh yeah this is perfect it already arrived so no this is the wrong one. Oh, this is also the wrong one so it didn't arrive, uh, but I ordered it yesterday, so it would be crazy if it arrived already. But what I ordered is also from uh, the same yarn, but in the colors Dijon and Caramel. And I'm not sure which I'm going to choose, and you need just one skein, so I ordered each of them. And I will see, and I swatch, get swatch, uh, which one I'm using, but... Now I have the problem that I need also another skein of this, um, it's, I think it's merino wool and it's, I think it's a lace merino wool, it's very very thin and so I think I need to order a skein from them but they have like smaller skeins as well, I think this is a 100 gram but they also have 50 gram skeins so and i also wanted to order from them yarn anyways so yeah i think i need that one for the brownish no it's i think it's a brownish color like red brownish color yeah but i'm not sure if i take the darker dijon or the lighter caramel but uh, i think i will do another video about like f my fall knitting plans and i'm hopefully going to have a swatch until then so what else did i order i also have seven balls of um brushed alpaca silk from drops and i really like it i'm not a huge mohair fan but i really like the brushed alpaca and also it's uh very cheap and uh, quite thick in comparison uh like you use way bigger needles with it in comparison to one strand of mohair and uh, Rachel from Night Sky Knitting, she uh, knit up uh, the fortune sweater by Petite Knit in this and what I thought about doing is the same. She has a sage green color and I decided for this like beautiful light gray, middle gray kind of color and I already have the pattern so I think this is going to be my first fall project because I think generally with the lace work it's more of a sophisticated jumper and it's also a lightweight jumper but still very warm so i think it's going to be very useful because i didn't take any jumpers with me i have a lot of jumpers like before i started knitting garments i already had like 20 to 30 jumpers they were all from like really nice wool a lot of them secondhand thrifted but yeah i already have like a lot of really nice jumpers so i actually don't need any more but i also have a jumper addiction so yeah this fall is going to be crazy um so yeah but i thought like okay what am i missing and also i'm giving a few away to friends like from the ones that i bought because a lot of them are too long for me um yeah because i'm a short person so actually knitting jumpers that perfectly fit me is quite exciting so yeah and you can only knit that many jumpers at, at a time so i'm not worried too much but yeah i think this might be the first like autumnal knit i'm going to do or this first or second i'm not sure maybe i start with the knot pullover um what else did i buy well, i think that's all right um okay now it's getting really exciting and i'm seeing we already have like we are already at 43 minutes which is just crazy do i have something to rip this out oh yeah i have like a pocket knife here like i'm always this person who carries a pocket knife with her and now with knitting it's very useful because it has scissors included as well and always i'm a huge um, train knitter and knitting on trains and having a scissor with you is perfect and so let 
me see. Oh my god, this is going to be crazy. I ordered this for my sister. So her birthday was three days ago and I said like, okay, you can get a knitted garment for your birthday and your Christmas gift together because I think otherwise it would be quite expensive because she got some knitted uh, socks before but I think there's a huge difference and also like they weren't the nicest yarn. I mean, she likes them a lot, but yeah, I thought like I could do her something nicer and also like the colorway of my sister is very different. She likes a lot of pas pastel tones, a lot of pink and rose colors. Um, so she has like a mo much more posh uh, clothing style. And so I said like, okay, what do you want? And she said like a cardigan, so I suggested cardigan number four by my favorite things knitwear because it's also in brioche knitting or half a fisherman's rib, I'm not sure, but it has like a deep V and some like slightly puffy sleeves and it's like really, really pretty. It's uh, recommended in three strands of mohair and yeah, I'm actually going to, not, no, I'm not going to knit up this in three strands of mohair. But, um, so I said like, what colorway do you want? And I sent her some pictures because in the beginning she said like, oh, a light yellow one. Um, but then she saw like this um, really, really crazy and pretty uh, color changing kind of neon, but kind of pastel colors, um, which was just beautiful. And I will insert a picture. So I found that yarn online and it was quite expensive. Also additional shipping from Denmark came to it. So I thought like, and also I think it's kind of boring to knit the exact same thing someone else knitted before. So I thought like, okay, let's see if there are like German brands out there who have like similar like yarn. And I found a few uh, which have like this candy colored pastel vibe going on and but I decided in the end on like some hand dyed mohair from a Berlin based brand. I'm um, also, I mean, I do have a lot of drops and or other like Scandinavian yarns and or big German brands, but I really want to get into more local or regional yarns and I might go into depth in to this with my fall or autumnal uh, knitting video, but yeah, so I'm really huge on um, supporting like local yarn brands, but I'm not a huge fan of hand dyed yarns. I like really like uh, directly from the sheep looking natural heathered yarns. But for my sister, I thought like, okay, this is the perfect occasion to buy really fancy, crazy mohair. And I think I bought the fanciest, craziest mohair. Look at this. Oh my god, can you see these colors? So baby, uh, basically they, they look like candy, I think. And I think they are perfect. Like this is 100% my sister. It also has like this lovely yellow, which, which she loves, but also some pink and purple and blue. It's, it's just beautiful. And the brand is called Berlin Pearl. And I think you can order this through um, Etsy. It's a kit mohair silk combination, 70% mohair, 28% silk, and it runs 420 meters on 50 gram and is recommended for uh, 2.5 to 3.5 needles. So I have two skeins of this and it might be enough, it might not be enough. But I, what I thought you could do actually is do the ribbing at the bottom and the ribbing at the arms, do just in white which would be a cool feature as well. This is crazy. This yarn is just crazy. And what I ordered it to knit with, but I'm not sure if this is working out, uh, is alpaca brushed silk, again, brushed alpaca silk by Drops to uh, reduce the cost because this was like 25 euros a skein, <laughs> which is really expensive. So uh, yeah, so this is really cheap. I think this is 12 euros. Uh, the pink one was also like 10 euros and the cream colored one from the Hjertegarn is also 12 euros and the uh, 
what is it the nord pullover i'm not sure how expensive it's going to be since i don't know how i'm going to meet gauge yet but uh, and the fortune sweater is going to be like 17 euros so it's very ex inexpensive as well so to lower the cost because just the mohair was 50 euros uh, i thought about combining this with brushed alpaca silk to meet gauge because i think it's neat knitted on six millimeter needles and this is like for, recommended up to 3.5 and this is recommended up to five so i think it would be perfect and also it would be muted a little bit down but they only had like this cream colored or off-white which i don't think is perfect because this is cooler tone so i would um prefer some real white but i couldn't find it and i was really up for buying another two strands of mohair to knit this with so i think i'm going to swatch and if this doesn't work out i'm going to repurpose this and have to find another second strand to knit this with but yeah i have some time for this i have until december i said like for christmas this is like my final finishing date so oh yeah i, I can't get over this i need to take pictures this is so fucking pretty this is just crazy and she's lovely like I wrote her because um, message because I wasn't sure if there's a second skein but this is crazy she has lovely other uh, um, what is it colorways as well and I find it really cool that I bought like from a lo local I mean I'm not living in Berlin anymore but yeah local yarn producer or hand dyer so I didn't only buy the Cream colored one but i also did buy this sage color i think it's even called sage i think it's the color uh rachel from night sky knitting knitted her fortune sweater with and this lavender blue color so i'm also going to knit another cardigan number four for another friend probably at the same time as the one for my sister and what i was planning on combining one strand of this or one strand of drops kitzel with one strand of the blue or one strand of the green and since i couldn't decide if or not of, of if i wanted to go purple or sage colored i ordered just both of them and i'm going to gauge swatch and see how they're looking and then i'm going to decide what colorway i'm going to knit for a gift knit and i think that's it i'm also ordered some other yarn to get yeah, for the nord pullover but it hasn't arrived i also ordered a needle with an add-on because i recently got the where are they oh yeah the oh, um knit needles uh which is a Japanese brand uh, and I think they've been in needle production for nearly a hundred years and they have really nice needles they have two different versions like one is uh, darker and one is lighter and they're differently treated but what is so spe so special about them is that they have actually like some kind of twisting method in the um, between the cable and the needle so the cable or the needle can twist on its own without untwisting from the cable so i don't know if this makes sense but you can i can switch this and this stays the same which is very useful because uh, i also have like interchangeable knit pro needles and they untwist all the time and i really enjoy knitting with them i prefer wooden needles than um metal needles and I think a lot of needles out there I find very ugly, I have to say. And these ones are, first of all, beautiful. The packaging is... I have to show you the... Just the stopper. Can you see that? I don't know if it's focusing. Yeah, but it's just beautiful. It's also made of bamboo and oh, I, I just love them. So they are very, very pretty and I really like knitting with them. I have to say sometimes when I knit, fl is it knitting flat? But sometimes it gets stuck on this, um, like where the cable com like goes into the metal part, even though this is not the, it twists directly where the circumference 
go smaller but they catch the yarn catches here so i don't know but i don't have it with all needles and what i do sometimes is like that the needle so i'm continental knitting and with the needle i'm knitting i'm using the right size and the needle i'm just holding my stitches on and knitting from i use a smaller size so this way they glide easily over it which solves the problem and what else did I buy? Ah, another thing I bought at Sustaine Grena, but another time, <laughs> is this really cute bag. Like, it has some quilting. And, yeah, it's perfect for needles. Like, I even get my DPNs, because I have a lot of DPNs um, in here, so which is rarely happens. And I thought about using this actually for, like, um, makeup and stuff, but... Now I'm using it for knitting stuff and I really like it. I'm thinking of buying another one. And I think this is all I bought. I mean, this is already a lot. Don't ask me why or how I'm going to finance this. Because I don't have an income right now. Now, So I'm waiting for like... Because if you don't have a job in Germany, you get social money. But I'm still waiting on that. And obviously, I'm hoping to find a job very soon. But yeah, I need to find a job to finance my knitting obsession. Because otherwise, this is going to ruin me. Um, so yeah, I think next is going to be a fall knitting video. But I think all the yarn is, needs to arrive. And I think some yarn I'm going to order. Not right now, because I have a lot of projects. Well, I have a lot of yarn for projects right now, so I think I will wait until maybe end of September or something. Also, I don't want to buy so much yarn before moving. I mean, hopefully I'm moving in autumn, but um, I need to take all of that with me to my flat then. So it would be easier to just order that directly to my new place and... So yeah, I will maybe, yeah, not order that yet, even though I already know what I want, but I can show pictures and uh, talk about my plans in my next video because I have a lot of plans because I just love jumpers and jumper season is coming. I mean, I kind of wear jumpers all year round, but this summer it was too hot even for me to wear jumpers. So yeah, I'm really looking forward. A lot of gift knits, I think free gift knits and um, yeah then we will see how many jumpers I will be able to knit for myself until the end of the year and yeah then then we will see how many jumpers I'm going to knit in the beginning of the year until it gets warm again but yeah I have a lot of plans a lot of safe patterns I would like to knit and a lot of different ones I would say as well and yeah we will see so thanks for watching and yeah, check out my Instagram if you're interested and yeah, you can, um, what is it like the abo button um, if you want to watch the next episode I'm going to post and it's nothing to say. I will continue knitting and will store all of my crazy yarn orders now and I think yeah, go downstairs and eat something and 